Hello there everybody, good day to you and welcome back. Glad you guys are here. I know, I'm super glad to be here. A little under the weather today and energy levels kind of low, uh, but I'm just going to fake it till I make it. So uh, what we're working on today is actually not a car, we're on a, kind of a side quest right here. Uh, my, uh, my neighbor was uh, attempting to do a wheel bearing on this uh, front spindle. I think this is for like a Hyundai or something. Uh, anyway, they couldn't get the, uh, the inner or the, I'm sorry, the outer race uh, of this hub bearing pressed out. Uh, I've got a new one right here and we can see it's got an inner race. Uh, there's a seal, there's our outer race, and then there's a magnet in here somewhere that's supposed to pick up on the wheel speed sensor right here, okay? So what we need to do is get all this stuff cleaned up. We can see right here where they, uh, they kind of chopped that out and air hammered it to get the inner race off of this hub. So I need to clean up all those burrs and a little bit of nasty stuff right there. Press out this outer race and clean that up because that's full of rust as well. And then get this new bearing pressed in, then press uh, this hub assembly into our new bearing. So that's kind of the side project, little side quest thing that we're going to do real quick. Um, I think I can get this thing out of here without any damage. And I think I can do it without an air hammer. I'm going to use the, uh, the press. Yeah, we're going to set this up and try to press out this big race right here and then, uh, you know, get the new one reassembled after we clean up the shaft right there. So, stay tuned because this right here is going to be a very good video. Happening Z hood. Yeah, here's our brake rotor. There was our brake rotor. Okay, so what we're going to do is roll the press out from its parking space over here. And I really like that this press has wheels on it. Uh, that was an afterthought. I don't think it came with wheels. These were a, a Harbor Freight edition. So we're going to maneuver this guy right on over here so we can use it next to our table. And uh, get this uh, bearing and hub and spindle slash knuckle assembly set up in here. We'll get it pressed in. We'll get it pressed out. Not in that order. And see if I can't get this, uh, this assembly back to my, uh, my guy. Hey, look at that classic hazard fraught style. This jack's leaking everywhere. How about that? Here's what it is. I'll fill it up full of motor oil and then it'll stop leaking. So, no big deal. Don't need any of that. Okie doke. So, first things first, I need to raise up uh, the press surface uh, on this press assembly or press unit a little bit higher to the next notch. That way, there's less space between the bottom of the jack and uh, the top of the, the surface right here. So, all we need to do is pick this up. We're gonna pull the pin. Can you guys see? It? We're gonna pull the pin, move it up to the next hole right here, set it down, and then switch sides, raise the other pin up. And I might go up one more hole. I don't know yet. Let's see how this fits in here, real quick. It's gonna be a little tough to get this thing set up evenly without uh, making the pieces fly apart and or breaking my spindle assembly right here. Let's see how this is gonna go. I think I can do it, yeah, right in there. Well, I can either, I can get it started like this. Yeah, I need to get, the, get that bearing pressed out and get it started, let's get it broken free. So that should be good for now. It will bottom out once it reaches uh, once it reaches the top of these plates right here. But uh, I think once I get it broken free and moving, I, uh, I can reposition these plates and then press it out the rest of the way. All right, pulling an adapter cone out of the ball joint kit. Actually, there's two ball joint kits. There's the press kit and then there's the master adapter kit. We're gonna use this guy right here and that's gonna sit on that little lip which is part of the bearing. So we're gonna put that right there. Then we need to put a big flat piece on it like so get it centered and then we'll press down on the jack on the adapters and it's going to press that bearing out. So let's scoop this back some, get it lined up with the hole right here. That looks good. Let's get started and see what happens. Alrighty, so let's tighten down our little, uh, little screw on the jack here. That's the release valve and start to jack this thing down until it makes contact. Bright lights. Right about 
How are we looking here? We're about to make contact. Let's scoop this thing back so it stays centered. There we go. Right there, all right. So now, let's take a jack handle here and get that jack operated. Coming down. Let's see if it's gonna work or if it's not. I think we're gonna do it. Come on out. Ooh, we're getting some pressure on this now. Is it gonna go? Oh. There we go. It moved. I think it moved. Yep, she's moving. Good. Ah, that is what I want. Yep, moving right on down beautifully. We're gonna do this. Jack the jack until that inner race bottoms out on uh, on these two pieces of C-channel steel, and then I'll have to reposition the knuckle. We'll keep going down. And I think, yep, we're there. That's all she wrote. Here, let's go ahead and back off our adjuster. Jack's gonna go up. Let's pull our cones out and inspect what has happened here. So we can see there's some nice shiny new exposed steel right there. That means that we were able to press that inner race down. Look at there, it's now flush with the, uh, the bottom, uh, or the backside rather, of the steering knuckle. So I think I can either just spread these out some and reposition and reshim them or find a large cone to put underneath of it. And I think as it sits, like that actually looks fairly level right there. I don't know, I don't know if that's gonna work. Nope. Let's try it. It's not gonna work. Whoa, gotcha. See that? Move through the matrix. Alrighty, so this is kind of what I've come up with so far. Uh, the top of that guy is looking fairly level. We can see that there's plenty of space down here for that bearing race to pop out. And neither one of these pieces of C-channel are in the way. I had to shim this little guy up with this piece of angle iron and one of the uh, other adapters for the ball joint kit. And I think this configuration will be sufficient to continue the press. So let's set our cone back in there. And actually, let's do this. That one's a little thicker. It'll serve as a good spacer. We can recenter it again. Right there. So we get down pressure on this. This is gonna remain stable, I think. It's got three points of contact here, here, and over there. That one's a little sketchy, but I think we uh, we should be good here. So retightening our, our little relief valve. Tighten that. And let's give it some down action here and see what happens. Come on down. Beginning contact now. Good. And we are we're rocking and rolling. Awesome. So right here, that's the bottom of the spindle. And that right there is the, uh, the inner race starting to press through. So you're moving, coming down, nice and easy. It's almost out. I'm gonna reach in from the bottom and catch this so it doesn't all fly apart. Ow, there she is. That's our adapter cone and the outer race it's right here. Very good. So now, pull that guy back out. Let's relieve, release the jack. There she goes. So what we need to do, we'll take our spindle out of here, put that guy over and our new bearing is going to press in just like so. See that? And I believe this is the magnet strip that is going to 
give the wheel speed sensor its uh, its position. Let's double check on that. That's the hole for the wheel speed sensor right there. So the sensor protrudes through that hole there and it's gonna overhang past the edge of this bearing. And as that bearing turns, it'll pick up the magnet inside and that, that's how the, uh, the signal is produced. And I'm fairly certain it's gonna be this side and not that side. I don't know, I didn't take it apart. It's uh, frustrating-ish. So now what we can do is I'm gonna use my old bearing race to press in the new bearing. So we reconfigure the press, put that guy flat, and then this knuckle in bearing will go in like so. Then we can just put some spacers on that and press her down. That one there, and let's move it over. Centered. That one fits. Very good. Same thing here with the jack. Let's close our valve. Crank it down and then press it in. Contact is made. That's not very good contact. It's, we're way off center. Look at that. Uh, not okay. I don't want to press this thing sideways. Redo. It's got to go a little farther back. Tighten you back up again. Scoot that back a couple millimeters. Recenter everybody. That's better. Oh, I went too far, did I? No, no, that's good. Good contact. Okay. Here's our bar. Oh, I'm off center again. Look at that. I failed to notice. Redo again. Round three. Let it up. Tighten it down. Center it again. Center it again. Center it again. There we go. Okay, she's moving. Alrighty, look at that. Going right in. And we're gonna press this until it bottoms out. All the way in. And we'll know from the feedback on the jack when it bottoms out. We'll feed it. Now there's a chance I'm gonna semi-press this other race back into the knuckle, but if that's the case, I've got that. I got methods to get it out. We'll hit it with hammers. Works every time, 60% of the time. Okay, we're bottomed out. Cannot get any more, any more motion out of it, so. Bar out, take our little valve and loosen that. Let it ride. Let's get our goodies back here. Oh good, it didn't press in, see that? Now let's check the back side. And it's looking flush. I hope I didn't do this the wrong way and our little magnets in here. I'm gonna be really upset if this is wrong because I'll have to do it again. Hmm. Oh, yep, looky there, I am right. I see it. It says right here, ABS sensor side, right there. I hope you guys can see that. Very fine print. ABS sensor side, it's laser engraved. Cool, okay. So, we have a snap ring that has to go into this because we need something to retain this bearing when we go to press in the hub, gravity. When we go to press the hub in from the other side. So, we'll get this thing kind of set up and we'll I driver it into position here. Let's see how I'm gonna do this. Push it in, we'll get behind it with a little pocket screwdriver if I can. And just kind of pry on it till it collapses. I that's not gonna work. Nope, 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 nope. Hammer. Okay, we need to go over here to the other bench. 
gonna need more working space. We need a larger pry driver, I think. Because I need to collapse this uh, this unit right here. And just work it down. Just gonna have to force it in. Walk that guy in. Uh, hammer, 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 hammer. There's one. Watch this. And that has snapped into place. And I have failed because I have covered up the hole for the wheel speed sensor. I did not realize what I did. So, love my job so much. We're gonna do it again. In case you missed it the first time, we're doing it again a second time. Woohoo! Ping! You see that thing? That's why we wear safety glasses. Let's try again in the proper orientation here. So that goes there. Get down in there, please. There. Pry it back. Pry it back, push it down, work it in, hammer. There we go, crisis averted. That guy's in, good to go. Okay, now we need to pay attention to the hub a little bit. We can see that the inner race on the old bearing was cut out with like a little chop saw and then it was hammered on some, which put a bunch of uh, nicks and scratches and valleys and gouges and whatnot in the surface uh, of this hub. Um, the thing's not totally destroyed, but it would make it difficult to press in. So what we need to do here is clean that up and make it smooth again. And I will do that with some mildly abrasive ZIS wheel pads. We're just gonna go over this thing and wheel this away until it knocks off all those raised areas. Uh, that way we can actually fit that thing into the race. So we'll use a little angle diagram to deal. All right, so I realize that this isn't gonna look like it's gonna be very effective because this is just like a, like a Brillo pad dishwasher scrubby type of device, but it will, with enough high speed action, uh, knock off all these ridges right here. And once I polish that smooth, this thing will press in uh, to the inner race, no problem. So let's make some loud noises. How's that looking? Feels nice and smooth. Yeah, all those raised areas are knocked off. Okay, let's go ahead, get this thing back on the press, and we will press these two units together, and then this operation will be complete. So again, we'll use some of the ball joint adapters. That seems to fit perfectly over that inner race, and it's not contacting the seal. So we'll put that guy in put our big spacer in. We're gonna do this upside down. That way I can see a little better. And one more time, we'll run the jack down. Tighten up the valves right here. We're gonna run down this jack and it is going to do the final press by pushing this whole spindle assembly down onto the, uh, the hub. We just have to make sure that like this area right here, this guy, the little weird pieces that are sticking out of this spindle do not, or knuckle rather, do not uh, contact the bottom of the press here. We cannot have any side load happening because if we have side load, it's not going to work. Let's make it centered. Looks good. Looks good to me. Go ahead and send it. It's putting down quite nicely, in fact. Smooth operator. So basically, we're just pressing on the inner race of that bearing, and the rest of these uh, 
rest of all that steel is just along for the ride. So we're going to run this down until it bottoms out, at which point the operation will be a success, as long as the bearing does not bind. So hopefully I don't mess this up. There we go. Jack is getting a little stiff. It means we are applying pressure that's not going anywhere. That's good. Release. Let's see what we've got. Does it work? Does it spin? Yes, it does. Look at that. She turns. This operation is a success. So one quick thing, I'd like to mention that the mechanism that prevents this from coming apart while driving is actually going to be the axle that splines through there. The axle is going to contact this uh, inner race of the bearing and it's going to contact, of course, the outer hub uh, on the hub. And as you tighten down that axle nut, it applies pressure to that bearing race, locking the thing in position. So once it's all assembled, uh, it's, a, it's a permanent situation. So this project is complete. I'm gonna run it next door and deliver this spindle and close this video out. Naturally, I will do such things as always by thanking each and every one of you guys for watching this video. I certainly hope you enjoyed this short video. If you did enjoy this video, please feel free to let me know about that in the comment section down below. Do not forget to tap that like button while you're down there. And most importantly, have yourselves a fantastic day. See you guys later. End of spindle, end of bearing press, end of video, end of transmission.